P. Thor here, Skull. Once again, we're doing a drive video, and I'll try to think of something to entertain and educate you with. And uh, a couple things that came up in Dragon's meetings. We had open Q&A. It was really nice. But let's talk a little bit about men and men in relationships. Men in any kind of relationship, whether it's a, you know, you're just starting to court, maybe you have a girlfriend, maybe you just have a new wife, maybe you've had a relationship for a while, and expressing your insecurities and fears to your uh, mate, particularly, you know, men expressing fears and anxieties to your woman that you have chosen to be committed to, or any woman for that matter. So, you look out and you hear, and we're all influenced, that we're supposed to express vulnerability. You know my stance on vulnerability. And express these unrestrained emotions that men have and we've suppressed to our women. And that will make us much better adapted to having good relationships and solid communication so that the relationships are better, more more happy. And um, I got to tell you, it's all bullshit. Yep. Bullshit. Um, I'll give you an example. All right, so you're a guy, you're at work, you know, things are stressful at work, and uh, it things aren't going well. You might not get the contract, and... Uh, you know, you have some bills, shit starting to pile up, and uh, you're a little bit stressed, and you go home and you tell your wife something like this. We're having, you know, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'm going to not get the contract. I'm afraid that I'm not being treated fairly, and, you know, I'm much better than that, and I deserve more. Uh, and, and I don't know what we're going to do if we don't get this contract. We're already in debt. You know, I'm very stressed about this. Uh, and on and on. It could be anything. It could be I'm stressed because my best friend did something. Or somebody got after me uh, at a basketball game. And i just very upset I didn't react right. And I'm bleeding my heart out to my woman. I might even cry. So, this is not helpful to your relationship at all. There's a better approach. And when I say not to express your insecurities and fears, particularly your insecurities and fears, you don't want to broadcast to your mate, your woman. This sets the seeds of, I'm just going to say it, it sets seeds of destruction in your relationship and loss of respect because what's really important to a woman in a relationship is to understand that she's with the best possible option that is secure and secures her a future. You have a role to play as a husband and a wife or as a boyfriend and a girlfriend or as a male and a female in a relationship. And that role, while we are told she is nurturing and caring, she is not your mother and she's not going to pat you on the head and say it'll be all right. Except we're told by everybody that's what we're supposed to do. We've even heard therapists say we need to express our emotions in such a way. I don't believe that's the case. You can absolutely communicate well without coming off as weakling and insecure. You could simply start the conversation like this. Dear, I got home from work. It looks like the contract's in jeopardy. So, I have a plan. We... Uh, need to tighten up a few things that way it can get us through to the other side if should we lose this contract uh, I have better options and here is what I'm thinking about as far as the solutions are concerned and then lay them out you know you might have to show some leadership and tell her look for right now instead of you know getting the pedicures let's do those at home you can still do your hair you know, I'm going to work some extra hours, so I'd appreciate if you would uh, prepare some meals for me so I could get through this contract negotiation. And while it might sound like I'm controlling and, 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 and telling her what to do, I'm actually expressing confidence in a plan that will address any 
problems that might come up instead of crying about them and expressing fear and insecurity. The best thing you can do about fear and insecurity is to come up with some solutions. Now, you might ask her, you know, here's my plan. Can you add to it? What can you think of that would help us with this plan where, you know, maybe my job's at risk, maybe this contract's at risk. And her role sometimes is just to give you an emotional perspective that on something that you may not have thought of. But to tell a woman that you're afraid and you're fearful, well, it sounds good on paper. You're allowed about two or three of these every 10 years. And after that, she starts to subconsciously lose respect for you. You're not capable of protecting and securing her future. And she just wants to know that you're the rock and you're the guy that can handle any storm, especially her emotional storms, because she's going to feel a whole lot more insecurities and be a lot more fearful in life than you will as the man. Why? Because you're built for it. She's built for other reasons. And part of that is that we protect them and we secure them in relationships. Play your role. Don't express your fears and your insecurities to your woman in such a fashion that it shows your pathetic weakness. No, don't do that. If you have a best friend, maybe you can do that with him. Otherwise, that's the sort of stuff you want to overcome personally by yourself. You might have your friends help you, but in your relationship, it's just not the best idea. Don't do those things. Anyway, that's kind of uh, my Viking uh, take on it when expressing fears and insecurities in your relationship. Don't do it. Skull. Masculinity is in crisis. What are we to do? We need to acquire a dominant masculine presence. Now available on Amazon. Masculinity is in crisis. Men's masculine behaviors and traits have been suppressed by popular culture. Why has it become so popular to shame, guilt, insult, masculinity, and masculine behaviors? After 50 to 70 years of this has resulted in a very large subset of men who have become weak, useless, and crisis. Pathetic state for boys and men that leads to depression and violent despair. A dominant masculine presence addresses this very dilemma for the individual man and it firmly establishes why this is what is desperately needed by the individual man today. In this book, clearly defined masculine traits and behaviors and the emotional durability provided by traditional masculinity are presented as a guide to what every man should embed into his identity. Putting these principles and behaviors into practice will motivate and direct your path step to step to create for yourself an authentic dominant masculine presence. Thank <laughs> you.